study on this topic, uh, the fact that we've had hearings, uh, not just this week, but we've had hearings before in the Criminal Law Committee uh, when the subject of uh, a no-doubt standard was suggested. I've had multiple conversations with colleagues and with advocates on either side, with survivors of murder victims who advocate on both sides, conversations with people who were exonerated. You know, I stand before you as an imperfect man. And I, as this bill passed out of committee earlier today, I am certain that people who voted in opposition, voted in opposition for different reasons. And I'm certain people who voted for the bill, voted for the bill for different reasons. You and I may not agree on whether it is morally permissible that man ought to be licensed by state to kill another man as punishment, even in the most perfect circumstances. Circumstances of certainty of guilt for the most heinous crimes. But I submit to you that's not what I'm here to debate today. As a child, I was raised in the Catholic Church, and many of the values that are instilled in me arise from that upbringing. While I'm no longer a member of the Catholic Church, I send my kids, my 12-year-old son and my 10-year-old daughter, which I've discussed this issue with, to Catholic school because of the values-based education that the particular school they go to offers. Now, I can make that imposition on my kids, but I cannot, in this chamber, make any such imposition as to what your values should be, what your faith should be. I let you reconcile, make the reconciliation for yourselves. I will simply tell you that we cannot afford to continue to have a death penalty in Illinois with the track record we have. We often talk about and we are talked about by the newspapers about the categories that we come in last in the nation or second to last, whether it be education funding, whether it be our, our bond rating, our deficit, things of that nature. But one of the most embarrassing things is that uh, I believe only the state of Florida have had more people sent to death row for crimes that they did not commit. We ought to be embarrassed by that because if an execution were to take place, it takes place in the name of the people of the state of Illinois. Now it's been said that with the moratorium, there have been reforms implemented and I've, as I mentioned in committee, I've heard the name of my predecessor used all too many times. And it said that he endorsed videotaped interrogation. And it was suggested that the videotaping of interrogations that take place are what was called in committee cradle to grave interrogations. That means purportedly those, the tape starts rolling uh, when the suspect is in custody. The problem with believing that is that since these reforms have been put in place, the videotape interrogation, we've had individuals, fathers of daughters that were killed, 
who confess to heinous murders of their children that they did not commit. This is after reforms. Kevin Fox and Jerry Hobbs. Heinous crimes for those of you all who say we should reserve this for just the most heinous crimes. Well, these were heinous crimes. An eight-year-old and nine-year-old girl stabbed to death. I've got a 10-year-old little girl. God forbid that I be in the situation, first of all, that she be murdered, but secondly, that I'm falsely accused for killing her. And then I'm somehow, I don't know how, they say cradle the grave interrogation, made to confess to murdering my daughter. I don't think that's evidence of reforms working. Well, you may say, well, in that case, there was DNA, right? And we've heard about the advances of science and DNA. Well, we also know that as I talk about some of the areas where we have a dismal record, our DNA testing is one of those areas. Not just for the backlog, but we've had a forensic scientist accused of giving false testimony. We've sent out DNA testing to outside labs that have come back with false evidence. Our system has been more than just imperfect with regards to these reforms that have been referred to. And I submit to you that when an individual, a governor, decides to lift a moratorium, if there is a case that ends up in the actual execution of a man or woman, there's an individual that has got to strap that man or woman down. There's an individual that has to inject that person on behalf of the people of the state of Illinois. That person could have been Jerry Hobbs. But for, again, it was said the DNA, it worked. The DNA testing worked. It was a chance arrest, not in the state of Illinois, but in the state of Virginia that led to us finding out that this man did not kill his daughter. Up in the gallery today is Randy Steidel. Randy, can you stand up for us? I'd like to welcome him to the Senate. And there was a heinous crime committed where a couple was stabbed to death. Randy was accused of that crime and spent years on death row. for a crime he didn't commit. As Randy stated in committee today, you can be released from prison, but you cannot be released from the grave. It wasn't our reforms that led to his exoneration. It was the federal courts, and it was, uh, he gave credit to, he did give credit to our Attorney General Lisa Madigan in committee. Thank you, Randy, for being here, and thank you for your advocacy. I also want to thank the victims. <laughs> who have advocated, notwithstanding their losses. Their losses that cannot be compensated by putting somebody else to death, and certainly not by putting somebody innocent to death. I want to thank the Catholic Conference and 
Francis Cardinal George, Reverend Thomas Doran, Reverend Daniel Janke, Reverend Edward Braxton, Reverend Joseph Siegel, Reverend Thomas Paprocki, in a letter that they put advocating for us to end this embarrassing death penalty we have. In their letter they state, society's need to protect itself no longer requires capital punishment. Furthermore, we know that no justice system is perfect and there can be no guarantee that the death penalty will never ever again be imposed on an innocent life. We know that there's no guarantee. Jerry Hobbs case is a prime example of where there's no guarantee. Had that individual not been caught in Virginia, it was mentioned that we have 15 people on death row right now, there would be 16. And guess what we would be talking about Jerry Hobbs as right now? One of those heinous crimes. We would be saying Jerry Hobbs deserves to die for the heinous crime that he committed. But he didn't commit it. But we would have been certain, because guess what? Our reform worked. Videotaping, he confessed on videotape. But it was wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an histor a historic opportunity today. We have an opportunity to part company with countries, part company as a state with countries that are the worst human rights violators and join the civilized world and end this practice of risking putting to death innocent people. I urge your I vote on this bill.